Welcome to this week's test pilot. We're going to Canada. Welcome to Canada and the Avro Arrow or the Avro Canada CF105 Arrow. On the runway we have the Avro Arrow V2 by Yukon 0009. Let us get going. So we're going to take off. So the Avro Arrow. So this was uh, this was Canada's sort of requested or hoped interceptor in the 1950s, 60s. Uh, let's see if this takes off, I think. Is it going to take off? I'm trying to pitch up. I'm trying to pitch up. We're running out of runway and we're up. Okay, so what we've learned is that the wheels are probably quite far back on the center of mass. Interesting. So we're going to go up. Um, I know something interesting about this one, which is, I believe, the number one turns on the afterburners. That's good. We'll do that. We'll get the gears in as well while we're at it. So we'll do a quick fly around with this. Looks uh, reasonably stable. Uh, the Avro Arrow was uh, built by Avro Canada. Avro Canada was. Um, it was an interesting little history actually so it was uh, it's linked to um, Avro in Britain um, towards I think it was towards the uh, during the Second World War and after the Second World War there was a whole thing about um, the Canadians wishing to develop their own sort of uh, aircraft and so forth and we're going to turn the afterburners off and so the government put sort of money forward to support this and a number of sort of companies were sort of conglomerated and things like that and you got um, particularly during uh, the Second World War you actually had a lot of designs from from British companies being produced in Canada and other other sta states because of course the UK could not really uh, <laughs> couldn't really produce enough and that's where Avro Canada came from it was actually uh, a fusion of a few different country companies so let's just see just get some power on this what is this craft like well as you can see from uh, the shape the Avro the Avro was um, or the arrow was uh, was a delta wing design, slightly swept tail, uh, not slight, 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 slightly swept uh, end of the uh, of the wing there. Um, it was designed to be an interceptor, um, so it was designed to be fast and maneuverable, particularly fast, and, and that was the hope anyway. This does not feel particularly maneuverable, but it does have it does have the engine power. It's definitely got good engines on it. Um, we're going to try. We're going to try. And uh, ooh, does it do? Does it do this? Is it going to do? You know what? That that ends to crazy. That ends to crazy. So we're just going to pull up. Let's pull up. It does not seem to have much authority on the stick, as it were. Um, it's it's not turning as much as I would like, and it seems to be very engine dependent, shall we say? Let's see. Can I just get a bit of thrust out of that? So, yeah. So this is the the Yukon Triple O Nine variant of this. The, uh, the the suggestion. You can go and check the links out below. Um, it is a nice craft. The, I always thought the Avro Arrow was, was a very sort of big, sort of wide craft. It was the in my head. It is the sort of the interceptor version of the Vulcan bomber that the British had. Um, because of its shape, it's sort of it's got that big wide wing now the interesting thing is of course Vulcan had quite chunky wings the uh, the arrow does not it had very thin wings and importantly very square if you look at the no uh, the inlets there, very square air inlets this is having trouble actually climbing though so we're going to try and land it see how it goes its authority is not good though Let's have a look. Oh, oh, something but oh, oh, the nose went. Okay, so take on that one. Um, yeah, uh, the uh, oh. yeah, a little vertical sort of control would would be better. Right, let's try another one, shall we? Right, let's look at the second craft we have here. This is the Curb Arrow. Oh, Curbo Arrow R1, um, and this is by EJ Essa. Um, not to anybody that's interested in this one when you load it up on the runway it will bubble up and down like a crazy person because it's uh, it's dampers on its rear springs are very very low so uh, yeah you might want to change those I've just uh, changed them a little bit we've got a nice big undercarriage there so this is yeah this is very much a kerbalized sort of sticker a nose cone on the front of there and you got the square things the big thing about the 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 arrow to note would be the the square air intakes 
the delta wing it's got a slight sweep back interesting this has got those little nicks in the wing which again were very much of the the Avro arrow um, this seems a much nicer craft to fly so let's see can it can it bank can it turn yes it can it's not getting up as much speed as the last one but lovely little shape and you'll see that sort of that that squared shape now the interesting thing about the arrow was that um, it, unlike a lot of craft of its time it actually went straight f onto the production line as, as it were so instead of doing hand built sort of prototypes the uh, the Canadians and Avro decided they were going to um, they're just going to go straight to the production line and that was partly to save money and also meant they could produce a number of uh, it's a really nice plane to fly so let's see how it lands a number of very well a number of uh, version of craft quickly so they could actually test out ideas um, originally uh, they started off with the, the Pratt and Whitney engine and then they moved on or the plan was to move on to to uh, other lighter more powerful engines um, I'm gonna come down we ooh, ooh, what stall speed is we just, uh, just, just stay there we'll just we just we just just do that just do that yep there we go a bit of bouncing put the brakes on would be helpful what's that do there we go bit of breakage there we go lovely so as long as you fix its uh, its rear landing gear before takeoff it'll stop bouncing around a bit that is the uh, the curb arrow Kerbo arrow r1 from ej sa links below i think that's a really nice craft um probably not flown it as much as i should but uh, yeah give it a go because that's very nice and stable on to the next one right here we are going down the runway with the next of our planes we're going to take off and this is the avro av k20 arrow by avro 500 so I'm not entirely sure if this is supposed to be a replica of the Avro Arrow or not. It has, it looks a bit like, like what is it, an F, an F-18 or something like that. Um, so I'm not entirely sure if it's supposed to be. However, Delta Wing, um, two big engines, but yeah, not sure it's supposed to be like that. I wonder whether the search functions and so forth get confused because the person's name is Avro, although it is called the Avro Arrow. So, then look at it. It is a really nice plane, actually. I'm just gonna. I'm being scared, careful with it, but let's just try and throw it around. Hey, look at that! Yeah, this is this is a really nice craft to fly, actually. And down, and there, and then we'll do a bit of that, and have some of that, and then a bit of like that, and then we'll turn up and then go. Okay, so interestingly, uh, the Avro Arrow um, underwent a very similar thing to the the TSR two that the British had. Um, which was uh, it was cancelled and everything about it was destroyed so it was one of those things where the the government um, of the day decided they wanted to, to look into the production of it and um, and so it was its factories were paused and um, everybody was sort of awaiting and waiting what was going to happen the uh, the Avro company uh, tried to sell it to the Americans to try to sell it to the British but that didn't really happen at the time the Americans and the British were working on their own stuff and, and developing their own things um, so in the end it was basically cancelled however um, just like with the TSR2 uh, magically it was a decision was made that all material relating to it should be destroyed now remember this craft was actually designed and built for, for production line manufacturing was actually being produced on production lines so they actually took all the tooling that had been designed for it and destroyed it as well as all of the remnants of craft everything like that so it was it was a quite an interesting situation actually um, to the point where you know there's still debate to this day you can have a look on forums and things like that and people people still get annoyed by it uh, let's try and land it Oh, nice little landing. It's a little twitchy. I must say, it's not. It's n it doesn't look anything like an Avro Arrow, actually, apart from the, the some of the wing shape. But it is very twitchy on landing. Got a little spoiler. I would imagine it's probably a replica of something else, or just an independent craft. But nice little craft. Let's try another one. So here we go with the next one. This is the Avro Canada CF one o five Arrow by Epic Space Troll one one three nine. Links down below. I'm taking off in the cockpit. I think this one looks really good, actually. Ooh, too too far, too far. I think this one looks really good, but you're not going to get to see it yet because I'm going to fly it like this for a bit. Let's have a look. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo. Let's uh, get out the cockpit. Oh, I don't actually have air sails on. Yeah. 
Um, you should probably have a joystick for that sort of situation. So, this is an interesting little design because they've actually uh, they've put. If you look at the nose, they've used a, a, a sort of a fairing for the nose, which is really cool. Can I? What's it, do I know what's inside there? I should actually let's do a look. Look inside. We're gonna we're gonna spoil the 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 mystique. But what have we got? Oh, it's it's completely empty. Oh, that's a bit depressing, isn't it? Okay, got that there. Nothing else inside. Hmm. And they've disabled the uh, thing. Right. So actually, let's have a look at the craft anyway. So looks really good, doesn't it? Um, its intakes are a little round because they're the standard sort of uh, ram air scoops. However, you know, I won't pick on that because uh, I think actually they've got a lot of really nice detail going on with it. So the wings have got that unique notch in them that I think is very arrow-like. It, it, it says Avro Arrow to me. Um, has got a bit of clipping of the, uh, the undercarriage support sort of units within the wings. Um, however, not terrible. It is very maneuverable. I like this. I could imagine this being an interceptor. Yeah, this is this is good. This is not just looking good. It actually flies good. You can see it's got that little sort of extra tail bit on the end that the arrow had. Yeah, this is a nice craft. Still got a little bit of. You've got to respect it because it's going to wobble a little bit. Um, but uh, let's click the engine to see if it glides. Um, it is nice actually, it's a very nice one. So yeah, this is by uh, Epic Space Troll. This is definitely not a troll, I'll put it that way. Um, yeah, it's a nice little craft actually. I wonder if it's landable. You see, what's he got on the front there? Is that two cockpits inside each other to give you that sort of double bubble, uh, which is a really nice little touch. He's got some nice little sort of antennae on the sides. He's got good, the interesting thing, he's got very good control surface use because we've actually, the first one we looked at, didn't had similar sized uh, potential for um for for control surfaces really didn't use them um let's see if we can turn on a stall uh, let's try that oh that was risky i just didn't want to hit the mountains right let's pull back a bit Oh, it's a heavy landing. That was that was my fault. Not not it. That was me because I was messed around. Right. Yeah, that's a really. Nice, I think that's my favourite so far. It feels heavy. It feels heavy to fly. Actually, it feels though you've got something that you're you're actually controlling there instead of like a little tiny fighter. This has actually got some weight to it and some power. You can feel the power. So, on to the next one. So this is our penultimate craft. This is the Avro CF one o five Arrow by Hunter One, and I have to say, uh, first of all, let's take off if we can. Can we take off? That'd be nice, yes, good. Um, I will say that, I'm gonna turn the power down on the engines just a schmidgen. Um, it's got all of the bits of an arrow, so it's got the, it's got the sort of the wings, you know, the little notch in the wings. It's got uh, the tail position, it's got the little nubbin on the back of the, between the engines. It's got the two sort of side air scoops. The well, it's the generic Kerbal one, so it's not added. It's not added any scoop to it, shall we say, um, or squareness. But it just doesn't feel right. Um, I think it's probably the cockpit. I think that is actually probably what it is. It also has very poor, very poor um, vertical control there. That's that's. It's, it's another one of these ones that seems to have lost sort of uh, respect for going up and, and being able to, to control pitch um, which is uh, uh, interesting actually it's it's not the first time we've seen that if you have a look inside and see you've got some clipping of parts there. that's quite well done uh, get the gear down because we're going to come in for landing no I don't mm, it it wants it wants to be an afro arrow but it just isn't it's, it just feels it feels like it's somebody's chopped bits off it or it's just been amputated. It doesn't fly terribly badly, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm not massively impressed. Um, I'll probably go with one of the previous ones instead of this. Good landing though, stable landing. Bit of a wobble, bit of a wiggle, bit of a tail wiggle, that's quite interesting. Okay, that would suggest there's something going on with clipping inside it, isn't there? Look at that, yeah, we've got a few interesting bits there for braking. Uh, do we actually have any brakes? The oh, the brakes are on. Okay, so 
that was the Avro CF105 Arrow by Hunter One. Let's move on to our last one, which is going to be a little um, different slash special. Let's see how it goes. It could go either way. Right, this is the AC CF105 Arrow by Holiday of the Leak. It is beautiful, but it is also about 670 parts. So it's not the smallest of craft. So this could go horribly wrong. So let's try this. Let's get some engines going. I'm not entirely sure it's designed to fly, but we'll give it a go anyway. Let's get going. No doubt this will crash horribly on landing. So yeah, so the Avro Arrow was canceled by the, the government, um, which is really sad because it is one of those great sort of 1950s, 60s planes that, uh, uh, that should have, should have and could have been, you know, a landmark. It's, it's, it's sort of styling itself is, is, I think, stunning. I love the little nick in the wing that just sort of is that you little unique difference that, that you've got there. Oh, this one is not doing well. Ooh. All right, helps if I put the actual SAS on, doesn't it? I didn't even realize we didn't have that on, so let's see. Now, considering this has got 600 parts, it is actually flying quite well when I put the SAS on. And I suppose you could trim out those, uh, those slight changes if you needed to. Um, at the moment, nowadays, the Avro Arrow, you can you can find examples of here, there, and all over the place. It's 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 cancellation is was contentious at the time and is still contentious, um, and it had the potential to be a really good craft. The interesting thing is that um, if it had come along now, and obviously different tech, but if it had come along now um, and somebody put that amount of effort into developing it, and it was on that sort of pathway, it would probably find a partner in another nation. However. Uh, Canada's closest sort of allies were the UK and America and they were really busy on developing their own capability. Um, they were both, you know, nuclear powers or soon to be nuclear powers. Um, they wanted planes with specific uh, things in mind and unfortunately Canada's couldn't really get past that. In reality, in the modern world, something like this, if nothing else, the countries of the Middle East um, and, and places like that developing world would love it because it is just, it, it, is a, it was a beautiful little craft. Not that small. It was very much, it, it, struck, it, was a, it struck a figure, shall we say, that uh, was memorable. And I think that that is something that, you know, the Canadians should be proud of because I think it was a, it was a great, great sort of plan. It's a pity, unfortunately, that unlike, well, like a lot of things at that time period, bureaucracy and politics got in the way of what was engineering and design. Um, so, we're going to try and land this thing um, anywhere, because it's going very slowly down. It's obviously made up of lots of wings, and because of that, you can see how slow, my, my timer is actually on yellow because it's so many parts recording and doing other stuff on this computer at the same time as trying to do this is probably not a good idea but it it's still reasonably smooth and it flies lovely it does look if you actually look at it you can you know the the front the front there uh, everything about it is just proportioned lovely the arrow had this odd sort of square round where um a lot of places had tried to do round and a lot tried to do square and and it sort of got the two I think really uniquely. I think the first time I saw a picture of it, I looked at the. Um, this is going to crash. This is going to crash horribly. I looked at the the air inlets and thought that's amazing. And there we go. Oh, it's going to be a slow motion crash at the end there. And as it crashes, I guess I can see it. That's been it for the Avro Arrow, and that's unfortunately pretty much how the Arrow ended. It was it was destroyed. So, from me until next time. Let the bits fall and have a great.